About 200 residents packed into the Flint City Hall dome tonight, many bringing with them bottles and jugs of brown, dirty, and cloudy water they say came straight from their tap. We got elderly in my neighborhood alone that need fresh water. This water's not fresh. The water is running out the faucets yellow and brown. People are breaking out with rashes and stuff, so it's clearly something wrong with our water. These residents say they haven't felt safe drinking or even using the water since Flint stopped getting water from Detroit and started getting it from the Flint River last year. Gertrude Marshall says she now has rashes from bathing in the water. I've always been a healthy person all my life, but since this thing started happening, my body's been rashed like maybe the last four months. City officials organized tonight's meeting hoping to inform residents about the city's old water system and the process now in motion to repair it. Some experts say even though some residents have water that's discolored, it's still safe for most people to drink. I understand the frustration of people and the difference they've seen and the quality of the water, but at the same time, my job isn't to look at the aesthetic issues. My job is to look at the health and safety of the water. Stephen Bush says even though the city was found in violation of the drinking water standard, progress is being made to get the access level of that disinfection byproduct under control. And the city is taking steps to correct the issue and that we're hoping that it'll be back into compliance. But most people still left tonight's meeting disappointed that more isn't being done and fast to get them water they aren't afraid to use. It was set up. They, was, they didn't come in to tell the truth. They just came in to tell us what they wanted to tell us. Really mad. Really mad. Frustrated and running out of patience, Bethany Hazard is one of dozens of Flint residents demanding answers from the city about the quality of her tap water. I'm paid $100 a month for me and hardly use the water at all, and I am have to buy water to drink. Hazard received a notice earlier this month that the water coming from the Flint River violates the Safe Drinking Water Act. That's because of high levels of a potentially dangerous byproduct called TTHM found in water samples. It says on the paper elderly, people with infants, people with bad immune systems should contact their physicians or health care providers. And have you? Yeah, I called and they said they don't recommend because I've had cancer twice to drink it. So for now, Hazard says she's turning off the tap. I just drink bottled water. And when I go up to Saginaw to visit my mom, I fill up my jugs. People shouldn't have to live like that. It's ridiculous. I'm a victim of greed, corruption, and the mistakes and the blatant stupidity of our government. This is absolutely ridiculous. Despite the concerns, Flint's emergency manager says the water is okay for most people to drink, and he does so himself. We drink it. You we do? drink it. Yes, we do. But Teresa Hatfield has cancer and a weakened immune system. She says her doctor has advised her not to. It's kind of hard for me to pay two bills. The water bill and going out to buy water, I'm on a fixed income. We understand there's a problem. Flint city leaders seemed set on their plan to repair and continue using its own system for now, but the emergency manager says they haven't ruled anything out. We believe that the strategy that we are pursuing will resolve the issues. If that's not the case, then we look at all options. It is brown, smelly, and causes rashes. Those are some of the claims people have made about the water coming from their tap. Well, many residents say they haven't felt safe using the city's water since they started uh, getting the water out of the Flint River. So today, our rescue squad stepped in to help. Faith Gantner has been out all day giving people a taste of clean water. Faith. That's right. Well, we truly got a workout while we were working today here in Flint, helping deliver more than 4,000 bottles of water. And our first stop was the North End Soup Kitchen. It makes me want to cry because <laughs> it's such a blessing to know that people really care. Thanks to a caring company, hundreds of people are receiving free bottled water. Today, Absa Pure teamed up with TV5 to donate more than 80 cases of water to Catholic Charities North End Soup Kitchen. Gloria Wade is a cook at the soup kitchen, thrilled to see our surprise. The people in this area need it so badly, so it, it's great, and there's no way to thank them enough. Luckily, there were plenty of volunteers to drop cases on a conveyor belt and pile them up one at a time. A lot of people just don't get this type of help. 
uh, for free. Uh, so be, be able to get the water and be able to share it with their children and, and not have any issues until this thing gets cleared up, um, I think is a great peace of mind. Astronomical amount of money, and it's not worth it. We're not drinking it. Flint residents taking a stand against the city's water troubles. A colleague of famed environmental activist Aaron Brockovich is now joining the effort for clean and safe water. One thing I've learned about the Flint water is um, when it comes to water treatment, less is more. Robert Bowcock joined Flint residents in a march for better water quality in front of City Hall. Bowcock, a water quality expert, is advising Flint water officials to cut back on chemicals. And what you're finding um, has happened is they've changed the water quality so drastically when they switched from Detroit to the Flint River that the corrosive nature of the water that's coming out of the Flint River water treatment plant is what's disrupting the distribution systems. And people continue to be upset with Flint's water situation. Today, people rallied outside the Flint water plant. The city violated the Safe Water Drinking Act earlier this year, but now says the water meets all regulations. But many people say the water is still dangerous to drink. A committee was recently formed to keep people informed on the city's attempts to improve the water quality. It is a ruling that has people rejoicing. Today, a Genesee County Circuit judge signed an emergency injunction to help people hurt by the Flint water debacle. Struggling to provide water that residents actually want to drink is reaching out for help. And tonight they say it might be time for the state to step in and provide millions, many, many millions to make this a reality. David Custer has that. I wanted some answers. I wanted some help. Leanne Walters is boiling, boiling over the water flowing into her home. I contacted Virginia Tech to see if they would be willing to do independent testing for my home, and they did. Those tests revealed high levels of lead in her water, and she asked the students and faculty at Virginia Tech to go beyond her home and test hundreds of spots throughout the city. Every zip code came back with a problem with lead. This is not a problem that's unique to the city of Flint. Many Midwestern cities are facing lead concerns. Director of Public Works Howard Croft says the city's water just became back in compliance with the Safe Drinking Water Act, and now this issue is raising even more concerns, concerns that are being addressed. Mayor Dane Walling drafting a letter to Governor Snyder asking for $30 million to upgrade the city's struggling water system, 10 million of which will be used to remove lead pipes. He came before city council tonight to get his letter endorsed, and that's when Walters cornered the mayor before walking in. Are you asking for the replacement to be city side only, or is that including what it's going to cost the citizens as well? Both. That's okay. why I call it healthy homes. Okay. Because there's uh, been a lot of dollars spent over the years on lead paint especially weatherization, so this would be a similar effort that would extend to indoor plumbing as well as service lines. Pleased with the mayor's response, Walters hopes the governor grants the mayor's request and her elected leaders fix the problem sooner than later. I would like for them to start being honest, and I would like for them to realize that there is a problem, and instead of being a hindrance, to start working together like they should be as our representatives. A new worry tonight for people who've been complaining about their water. They're wondering now, is it even safe to drink? That's what a report shows it contains harmful amounts of lead. And that report was the focus of a meeting tonight in Flint. And that's where we find Andrew Keller, who joins us now. Drew. Well, Virginia Tech researchers are telling people in the town if they want to drink the water, they need to flush their system for at least five minutes or they need to have a special filter that can detect and pull out lead. Now, it's the conclusion from a report that found lead in the water system here in Flint and is just the beginning of a major outcry. We're sick and tired of being mistreated and we want fresh, clean water and we want it from the best source. The cost of Flint City Water took the back seat tonight. Somebody isn't, hasn't been telling us the truth. As the alarming water quality report released by Virginia Tech University claimed center stage. There's no part of the city that is immune from this problem. Tonight, nearly 200 people listened to Virginia Tech professor Mark Edwards as he laid out his serious concerns with the city's water. Edwards says several tests of Flint homes turned up lead levels that far exceed EPA standards. This is why uh, something we think should be taken seriously and that folks need to um, take steps to protect themselves. Edwards says the city turning to Flint River water from Detroit has caused underground pipes to corrode, aging the system significantly. But even more concerning, he says those lead particles are entering the water going into homes. He questions why city and state tests did not detect the high levels before. 
and so do residents. Why would they lie? Why would they do cheating tests? Why would they hold back information? And tonight, the ACLU is also asking that question. That there should be an independent outside investigation looking into exactly what the city did in order to be able to claim that this water is safe when it's not. And now the city responding to this report tonight. They say that they've done the tests according to law, but they are working with the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality to try to improve the corrosive levels with this Flint River water. Stay tuned. Live and local in Flint, Andrew Keller, WNEM TV5. Also developing tonight, they've been mostly silent during the Flint water debacle, but now a number of local hospitals are getting involved. Today, the hospitals address the medical concerns surrounding lead levels in the city's water supply. There is no amount of lead that's safe for humans to consume especially for young children. Dr. Lawrence Reynolds is disturbed by the high levels of lead in Flint water. The CEO of My Children's Health Center joined other medical professionals today to express their concerns about data that showed lead levels have more than doubled in some neighborhoods since the city started tapping into the Flint River for water. The county health director is equally alarmed. In the case of lead in water, you can't taste it, you can't smell it. The only way to detect it is to have your water tested. That test was done independently and recently released by Professor Mark Edwards of Virginia Tech, an expert in the field. Today, the medical community raised the red flag, saying the new test results takes this ongoing problem to the crisis level. Why has it taken so long for the medical community to respond? Yeah, you know, I don't think the lead is new. The lead issue is new. Um, the other chemicals that were elevated, known, unknown, um, we didn't have kind of a research backing about what that would do to people. When we hit the streets for community reaction following today's announcement, residents told us they wondered if city officials fully understood the scope of the problem. City Administrator Natasha Henderson insists they do. That's why we're here. We're here to show our support and to say that we are going to do anything and um, work with the health coalition and the medical community and into any type of way to ensure that um, their concerns are addressed. You know, I asked Natasha Henderson whether or not she was concerned as far as disappointment was when they found out the findings of the lead and the contamination, some areas more than double. She says she's very disappointed, but it doesn't stop the city from trying to find a solution. And tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, the city will have a rebuttal to the findings that have been brought by the medical community. Reporting live in Flint, Ronnie Duncan, WNEM TV5. Live and local with coverage you can count on. This is WNEM TV5 News at 5. From violating the Safe Drinking Water Act to potentially dangerous levels of lead, one mid-Michigan city has been dealing with a host of trouble since it began drawing water from the Flint River. But now the governor says action is coming by the end of the week. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sam Merrill. And I'm Colette Boyd. Now, Governor Snyder says he is going to get involved in Flint's water crisis, but hasn't revealed much about what he plans to do. So TV5's Nick Lully asked him some tough questions. Our viewers want to know, what are you going to do about the Flint water crisis? Mm -hmm. For months, Flint's water supply has been plagued with foul smell, gross discoloration, and now, dangerous levels of lead. So we wanted to ask the tough questions of Governor Rick Snyder. After all, it was his appointed emergency manager who oversaw pulling the plug on Detroit. I think it was a mistake to switch to the Flint River as the source for the water supply. In terms of a mistake, what I would say is, is we found there are probably things that weren't as fully understood um, when that switch was made. And again, it was a switch made with the community. Snyder and his administration are quick to point out that the decision was made with support of city leaders at the time. But today, for the first time, the governor appeared to acknowledge that increased levels of lead found in children in Flint are directly related to the water supply. It appears that lead levels could be higher or have increased what can be done to deal with that in an effective fashion. But almost as soon as the questions about Flint water started, the press briefing was over and the governor exited through a rear door. I, you know what, I am apologize, we're out of time. We gotta wrap up. Thank you everyone, thank you. 
After the governor slipped out, a member of his communications team told me that there could be an event planned for as early as Friday to discuss the specifics of fixing the Flint water crisis. This is WNEM TV 5 News at 6. Were there mistakes made in the handling of Flint's water emergency? Who needs to be held accountable and why did you tell us federal rules were being followed? So who is responsible for the mistakes that led to Flint's water crisis? Tonight we are asking the tough questions of both state and city officials getting answers for you. Today the State Department of Environmental Quality admitted they messed up. What about the city though? How did the water issues apparently get by everybody and become a national story? James Felton is asking the tough questions. He begins our team coverage. It's been a ever evolving and more troubling the more the more layers you scratch. Jim Ananick describing the water crisis that has plagued Flint the last 18 months. Now the state senate minority leader wants the legislature to launch an investigation wanting those responsible for this mess to be held accountable. I think the responsibility can be laid across multiple levels. So we brought our tough questions to the mayor wanting to know about his culpability in all of this. Flint relied on the information provided us to the MDQ. Why weren't the federal rules followed? The Michigan Department of Environment quality has admitted uh, their leading role in um, Flint's water contamination problems. Who needs to be held accountable and why did you tell us federal rules were being followed? Michigan Department of Environmental Quality uh, MDEQ assured Flint that the standards were being followed, that the city's water met those standards, and that information was clearly wrong. This was the state's fault. Meanwhile, Anna Nick also wants to see measures put in place to prevent lead-tainted water from ever coming out of anyone's faucet again. We send Peace Corps volunteers all over the world to help people make sure they have safe drinking water. And, and in Flint, Michigan, United States of America 2015, uh, we had a period where people didn't didn't feel comfortable and still don't feel comfortable drinking the water. Asking the tough questions in Flint, James Felton, WNEM, TV5. Now, the mayor says responsibility rests with the DEQ, and today the agency took some of that blame. TV5's Faith Gantner went to Lansing and continues our team coverage. We're committed to demonstrating trust and uh, ensuring that Flint has a safe drinking water. The Michigan Department of Environmental Quality owns up to mistakes made during Flint's water emergency. Michigan DEQ Director Dan Wyant acknowledges the wrong federal protocols were used, leading the DEQ to declare Flint water safe to drink for more than a year, when instead levels of lead were dangerously high. He met with us today to face our tough questions. There it was not enough method for corrosion control in place, and that's recognition. Uh, what's being asked today is that corrosion control be put in place. Blaming a lack of experience among staff members, the DEQ is now working to correct the problem, including reassigning the official in charge of municipal drinking water. For Flint residents who have been paying the price now for more than a year for these mistakes, what would you want to tell them? Well, I, I just appreciate their frustration, I appreciate their anger, uh, but we're committed to getting it right. We then asked Wyant if mistakes like this were made in Flint, could there be similar issues in other Michigan cities? We haven't had a city above 50,000 switch water supply, so in the short term, no. Long term, we'll, we'll correct this, and uh, going forward, we're committed to making sure all water is safe. Meanwhile, Governor Rick Snyder is calling for an independent third-party review of the state's handling of Flint's water crisis. Reporting from Lansing, Faith Gantner, WNEM TV5. WNEM TV5 News starts right now with a breaking news alert. All right, on this election night, we interrupt Colbert for some breaking news out of Flint. Looks like we've got a winner in the mayor's race in Flint. That's right, David Custer joins us live at the headquarters of Dr. Karen Weaver. David. That's right, Colette and Sam. History was made in the city of Flint tonight, and I'm joined by the new mayor of the city of Flint, Dr. Karen Weaver. How does it feel tonight? It feels really good. I'm glad to be here. It's been a long, it's been a long road, but hard work paid off, and it's time for us to do what we talked about. In one of those situations that you said you told me earlier that people were not informed was about the water crisis in the city of Flint right now. How are you going to fix this? That was one of them. Well, what we've talked about as far as the water is I've always said that I wanted to meet with the congressional delegation. I said that Flint needs to be declared a disaster area, so I'm going to be working with the state reps and uh, state senator. We need to make that happen because we know that we can't fix it with the funds that Flint or the state have, and we need some federal assistance, and we need that now, and we should have had that. Mayor 
of Mid-Michigan's largest city fulfills her campaign promise and declares a state of emergency. Good evening, I'm David Custer. And I'm Colette Boyd. Mayor Karen Weaver made that declaration last night in Flint and again this afternoon. It's a response to the city's ongoing water crisis. She says it's needed to raise awareness of a problem that hasn't gone away. TV5's Ronnie Duncan joins us live in downtown Flint with more. Ronnie. Thank you very much, David and Colette. I can tell you this much. From the day that Karen Weaver first took office, she made a claim and a battle cry that she wanted Flint to get back the safe drinking water. Today, she took the first step with the declaration that this is a disaster area and that contaminated water is no longer wanted in Flint. I feel like we have no other option but to reach out and ask for help. The mayor of Flint describing why after nearly a month in office, she is declaring a state of emergency for her city. Today at City Hall, she said that the water crisis leaves her no other choice and that she's living up to her campaign promise by declaring the emergency. We knew that we had to, to take this step to make these things happen. I'm sorry, uh, to make this happen. Uh, and it will open up, it's going to open up some other avenues for us. But if we don't take this first step, nothing will happen. Mayor Weaver is urging both the state and Washington to get on board and to understand the gravity of the situation. The new boss of Flint is asking for federal disaster aid and for some local advocates like Melissa Mays, that's welcome news. I am so thrilled that in this short amount of time she has stood up for us. Even before she was elected, she was demanding to, that this be declared a state of emergency. Tonight, there are no new medical findings about the impact of the lead lace water that's leading some to cast doubt on the declaration. County Board Chairman Jamie Curtis is among them. He told the Flint Journal that the destination for an emergency is not going to change anything. He goes on to say nothing more can be done. Well, you know what? It was interesting because what they're waiting on is that certified uh, declaration of emergency. And hopefully that's getting over there. If it's not there right this minute, it should be on its way today.